car, obviously, took an injury uh, on Sunday. How's, how's he looking? Uh, how's he looking for this Sunday? He was full today, so he's, he's ready to go. He's ready to go. Dolphins defense, they're pretty aggressive. They play a lot of man coverage and he gets a lot of, not, not getting too many details, but what kind of uh, challenges that present for you as an offense? A lot of challenges. I mean, they're really a good defense. They have great corners that can handle the the one-on-one -on -one burden, the pressure of uh, covering a guy with no help for a long time. Howard and Jones are two of the best in the league, and Coleman is a guy that's got a lot of experience in his slot, and um, Rowe is a former corner that can cover uh, as well. So they have the people that can cover, and they have a coach that is uh, very well versed in how to get home and create problems with protections. So it's a it's a real challenge for us. Speaking about those corners at Howard and Jones, uh, how much confident are you in Ruggs and Edwards from last year's matchup into this year's matchup with the development? Well, I'm a confident guy, so I mean, I don't lack confidence. We well, got to let Ruggs and Edwards take care of that on the on the on the grass. But I'm I'm a confident person. We haven't seen the injury report yet, but Alex Leatherwood and Richie Incognito, anything updates? Well, we'll have an official document signed by the proper people so you have the exact status of everybody. Um, so everybody's pleased. But Leatherwood was full today. Carr was full today. Incognito did not practice, nor did Josh Jacobs. Teamer did not practice. And who else didn't practice? Dallin Levitt did not practice, and we will get that document certified in your hands soon. John, when you're calling your plays this season, and it comes to calling for bigger plays. Are you, are you having, you're playing chess, obviously, against the defense, but are you having fun calling the big plays, the big numbers, those big pass plays? Is it somewhat get fun for you and, and seeing them execute the big plays? I just like execution. You know, I really do. We, we uh, we were good on third down last year. We were good in the two-minute drill. We did some good things scoring the football. We still have plenty of areas to clean up. But yeah, I mean, when you call a play that works, whether it's a short yardage conversion or a goal line conversion or a long big play, you, you know, you have to get excited about something. There's enough negativity out there to, to kill any rat right now. So you, you know, I do get excited when we make a good play, especially a big play, an explosive game. The end of Sunday's game, it seemed like you guys started getting a little on track on the run game. Uh, that's something that we maybe carry over. Yeah, I mean, you know, if you do the history on Pittsburgh and Baltimore, you know, call me and tell me the teams that have run the ball up and down their throat. You know, these are good run defenses. They're also defenses that are committed to stopping a run with multiple people on the line of scrimmage and chaotic blitzes. Uh, so you have to be honest with yourself and say, you know what, it's going to be hard to run the ball today. I don't care if we have Walter Payton or Jim Brown uh, in their prime. You know, it's hard to run the ball against certain defenses. And with that being said, you have to find other ways to move the ball. And right now, we've improved a little bit in the passing game. We're not there yet e either. But uh, against Miami, it's going to be a very, very difficult day throwing and running. And uh, the tape proves that. Yeah, you guys use a lot of heavy personnel, which is something that you don't see too much in the league anymore. Um, what about your roster allows you guys to be so successful when you go to those I don't know what we said when we first got here. That was the goal, was to try to put together a team that could adapt on a weekly basis. You hear certain teams say we have specific game plans for specific teams. That's what we would like to do, too. Uh, you'd like to attack a base defense. You'd like to attack a nickel defense. And to do that, you have to have tight ends. You have to have a fullback. That's just our philosophy here. Um, not everybody agrees. Uh, but we've improved the roster. And therefore, we've improved our capabilities to attack defenses different ways. As cutthroat as the nature of this league can be, to have beaten the two teams that you did and sit here today where you are, is there a 2 0 glow? With no. That? No. We, you know, we had a 2 0 the year last year. You know, it's not where you line up, it's where you wind up. You know, it's, as re it's, it's, a, it's a past now. We got to. We got a long way to go. We still have 15 games. Somebody told me we're playing 17 regular season games. And we're about to play 18 or 19 next year. Who knows? But um, not to be uh, sarcastic, but no, we uh, we want to win this game this week and try to stay in the hunt. John, as a coach whose team is successful at this point in the year, how difficult is it to know, yeah, there is a lot of negativity, let's be positive, but also tap the brakes. Is that one of the hardest parts about being a head coach? No, I try not to worry about the negative things. You know, I'm more of a 
don't pay attention to, to that kind of stuff. There's a lot of people paid a lot of money to get Twitter hits and uh, YouTube videos and encourage you to uh, feed your mind with negativity. And I don't, I don't really care about that stuff. I'm at a point now where I like to feed the birds. I like to go fishing. I like to have a good time. And I'm going to have a good time coaching. I like these players, and I don't give a damn about negativity. There's enough of it in politics, in our social world right now, and we're here to try to create a positive Las Vegas vibe and have some fun here, and that's what we're doing. So last night in the, the Real Sports uh, segment with Andrew Kramer, there's a scene where you're alone in the film in, in, in an office and you're watching film, but it's dark and you're sort of just secluded, but you're in your own little world. Is that your zen? Is that where you? Pretty much, yep. I mean, I love that part of the the, the life of football, you know, the, the studying and the idea that maybe you can help a guy get better, maybe help be a part of winning a football game at this level. I just love the competition, love the camaraderie, love the journey of uh, competing. And, um, you know, you got you to gotta do the preparation I always talk about preparation and presentation. If you don't do the preparation, you can't present anything on game day. So I enjoy that part of it. The Dolphins have one of the longest streaks ever in the NFL of forcing fumbles. Uh, is there something that you've seen that they do in particular? And how much of that? Yeah, they beat the Patriots with a key fumble late in the game. You know, in New England, that was a great win. They are, they are very physical guys. Their linebackers, Roberts, um, Baker, they impressed me. Their linebacking core. X Howard has 10 picks last year. They're ball hawking. They're a pressure defense, and when the free hitter gets there, he knows how to get the ball out. So uh, we've emphasized it, and we'll continue to do that uh, throughout the week. Coach, Joe has been ruled out for Sunday's game. What have you seen on film that Jacoby Brissett could bring to the Miami offense that maybe Chua couldn't? Well, we're familiarizing ourselves with the Dolphins' system. They have a new coordinator. Chan Gailey's no longer there. So Coach Godsey does things a little bit differently. First thing is familiarize yourself with their scheme. And then their personnel, they've got great receivers and a very, very formidable tight end. And Brissett can extend plays. So we got a lot of respect for him. We've played against him in the past. He's a dual threat, capable of doing a lot of different things. John, given the injuries on the offensive line and the guys, the moving parts on there, Tom Cable getting a extra time to this thing together? I mean, what's your assessment of what he's been able to do and what those guys have been able to do on the line? Well, we're, we're hanging in there. You know, Tom's done an excellent job. So is Cam Clemens, our, our assistant line coach. You know, when Tom's up here working, trying to put the game plan together, Cam is introducing himself to, you know, Jackson Barton. Or, hey, here's – we got a Luminor here. here. Here's a new guy. We got – Simmons is coming in here. So it's a combination of a lot of people throughout the day helping these young guys learn our system because it is a lot. And um, – both Tom and Cam deserve a, a, a lot of credit. So does Tim Burbanek. You know, he's our new running back coach. We lost Jalen Richard. We lost our feature back. But other teams are dealing with uh, adversity. We have to adapt the best we can. That's good. All right, guys. Have a good one. Thank you, John. Check, check. KJ, we've seen the differences on this defense uh, the first two games, but mm -hmm. specifically, you can really see the imprint of Bradley with his yeah. disciples, you and Perryman and Quentin and Casey. Mm -hmm. Just talk about you, your guys in particular, and, and how important that is to sort of just let it be contained. Yeah, yeah, you definitely have um, Gus's disciples at, at all three levels, the backhand linebackers and the D-line, and it's just, um, it's really cool to see, like, how successful, everywhere Gus has gone, he's been successful, and for him to come here and have the same successful start in, on this 2-0 and start, is really cool to see. I love the way this defense plays, play fast. This defense plays very confident, and you see, like, there's, there's not too many mistakes out there, because what we do is we prepare like no other, and we just able to play fast, and so to see Gus, and uh, with his play calling, and with these guys, it's, it's really fun to see. Some pretty good defensive lines. We're not asking you to compare or anything yeah. like that, but 
this group seems to be getting after it pretty good. This defensive line is very good. And um, when I first got here, when I first got here, the first first uh, few practices, I saw how Yannick and Crosby were just, how, how their chemistry is with those two, how they talk every play, how they come off the edge and have their stunts. It's really good to see. And um, I was with Quinn Jefferson in Seattle, and to see him go from a young rookie to where he is now, this dude, in my eyes, is one of the best three techniques in the NFL. He doesn't get the credit that you know most guys get, but he is always on it every day. And um, our rotation is really good. You know, don't matter who come out there, whether it's um, uh, Clee coming off the edge. You know, we look we look really good at, in the, at that front defensive line. KJ, when you first got hired, I asked you when you brought in. I asked you about them wanting you to be a leader. And in the first two games, every time I look at you in the sidelines, you're talking to a young player. Yeah. What does it mean that they'll not that they're listening to you? They should listen, because <laughs> I should. I got a lot of um, got a lot of wisdom, got a lot of um, accolades, got some Super Bowls under my belt under my belt, and so you know, year eleven, I have a lot of insight and knowledge. I've seen a lot of football, and so it's only smart to listen. I did that when I was a rookie. Listen to the Brandon Meebangs of the world and the Red Bryants, and so when you have a guy on this team. You know, you got to just just be a sponge, just get all kind of information from them, how they take care of their body, how they prepare for film. And so it's only smart that they do that. KJ, um, you guys, you're talking about the front. You haven't had the blitz a lot because you got so much good pressure. Yeah. Does that make it harder now for future opponents when you bring packages that maybe haven't been on film? And two, does it also say something about you said, I think, when you were here last, that's the scheme is pretty simple. You just yeah. do what you're supposed to do. Yeah, as you've seen, um, yeah, not too many blitzes. And when we have called them, you saw that they've come home. And so um, it's, it's really good when you can just rush with four and have the rest of the seven dropping back. But when we do dial it up, you know, teams aren't expecting it. And Gus, you know, for some reason, he has just perfect timing when he does call his blitzes. And so, um, yeah, just, just what we can do up front, the versatility that we have on this team, we're bringing safeties off the edge when we need to, bringing some linebackers, it, it really helps us out. You're the second guy to uh, bring up kind of unprompted about how Quentin's uh, a little underappreciated and yeah. people realize, well, what is it about him that, that makes you guys uh, see that and so many people say that? Yeah, because I, I watch football all the time. I watch, I watch ball and I see some guys that do certain things that other guys do, but they get the credit. And so it's like, you know, where is this, where is this going? You know, why isn't Quinn Jefferson name being put up there with the best? And I believe that he's finally starting to come alive. You know, we have some primetime games, so the rest of the world can start to see him. And, you know, Quinn's not a me, me, me guy, but, you know, you still want that respect as, as, as a player. And you want that respect from your teammates and from the fans and from the coaches around the league. And so he's just getting started. I believe this is, what, fifth year? And so, um, yeah, just, you just got to keep it going. I mean, I love playing with him. I'm not sure how much this is on your radar uh, when you're doing your thing, but Nate Hobbs as a rookie yeah. seems to have really, I mean, you don't, he doesn't feel like a rookie. Doesn't yeah, like a rookie. it's funny. I was, I, was talk, who was I, talk, I was talking to my mom yesterday. She was like, I like, I like that, uh, 30, was 39, 37? I like, yeah, he's, he's really good. And uh, he's, you know, when you have a nickel that can tackle, that can cover, he looks like a savvy vet out there. He looks really good, but with, with him, he got to make sure you stay consistent. You know, don't let this early success get to your head. Just stay consistent, stay consistent, and just keep doing your thing because the nickel position is one of the toughest positions, you know, out there out there in the slot. You got to be in the run fit and be out there on the island by yourself. So he's off to a really good start, and, um, yeah, me and him talk all the time. If we could piggyback on your uh, on this question about talking to the youngsters, can you think about since you've gotten here through the first two games, an isolated incident, one guy maybe, and now, and then you see them execute that you're oh, you put me on the spot. out of. You put me on the spot right there. Oh, you put me on the spot. I ain't got one for you. But just, just talking to the guys about preparation, how do you prepare? And uh, when I'm out there on the field, I'm calling plays, hey, watch for this, watch for that screen on the backside, and some things happen like that. You know, that stuff, you know, definitely gives me joy. But um, I, can't, I can't pinpoint an exact thing. Give me a little more time. Got gotcha. you. Yeah, guys did a better job in, against the run in week two than in week one. Yeah. What improvements did you see in that area specifically? Uh, well, in week one, we had two running backs back there. You know, Lamar, he's a guy that has tons of speed. And, um, you know, they also have their other running backs. But with this, we knew that 22 would be the main guy. And it wasn't all those, you know, pullers and quarterback keeping the ball. It was simply stretch play, counter plays. And so I believe that's going to be the same thing when we come in this week with Miles um, Gaskins and um, Salvan, two, two really good running backs. So we can really pinpoint on if it is a run where the ball is going. Hey, Jay, Sam Ford, Las Vegas Review Journal. Nice to meet you. Um, you were mentioned at the top 
Dan Cross has had success everywhere he's gone. What do you think drives his success as a coach and has driven him throughout the course of his career? Man, Gus, the way he prepares. There's, there's not anything that we would miss that this offense is going to do. And we know what they're going to do before it happens. He puts it on the board. He makes it loud and clear. Hey, let's focus on this. This is how this team want to attack us. And so it's crystal clear what, what he does. And he gives us a lot of information. And it's, us, it's up to us to process it. But um, come Sunday, we prepare all throughout the week. And we're always ready to roll. Miles Gaston going up against him. I believe he's trained at the same facility as you in Washington. Yeah. Cool yeah, we, we both trained at um, Ford Sports Performance in Bellevue, Washington. And Salvan trains there as well, the other running back. And just to uh, work out with those guys and see how much effort that they put into their training, it's only right that those guys have great seasons. And uh, anybody that comes to that facility usually has a great season. Bobby trains there as well. And so to compete against those guys is going to be fun. I played against them last year, and it was good seeing him. And so just another matchup. Won't be no brother-in-law out there. He's going to try to shake me. I'm going to try to get him to the ground. So it's going to be all love. It seems like it should be like a really chaotic last month for you, like signing the team, <laughs> the emotions of leaving, yeah. starting the season right away, like all these things, and starting 2-0. and yeah. It seems like it should be crazy, but you seem very chill on the field, off the field, everything else. Like, has it been crazy? Don't let the chillness fool you. It's, it's been crazy. Um, for me to sign and to leave my family the next day, that, that was a lot. That's a lot to process as a man that has three kids and a wife. It's like, all right, family, I got to go do my thing. And to leave my family for six months, that's, that is a lot. To find a new house, ship my car out here, make new friends, learn the playbook, play an NFL game within a week, that's a lot. So um, thank, thank God for his uh, peace that he's been giving me. Been praying every night, just trying to just get adjusted. And so I am a chill guy, but uh, I am human as well. And so I'm, I'm finally starting my routine, get my massage therapist, get my acupuncture people. And um, so it's, it's starting, to, starting to find my routine. KJ, I got to ask you. Um, so as Twitterers will do, they'll grab a, a clip of something and tweet out. So, of course, the Najee stiff arm stopped after he stiff armed Jonathan. What got left out was the ending of that play in which you sort of came out with a little bit of a settle down youngster hit on him to sort of end that play. Yeah. When you see that, <laughs> it, it, did you put a little extra on it? It seemed like he, came, he was coming off a spin move. I got to ask you about it because so many highlights, they never put the end of it on. You know, you know how that works. And for me personally, I delete Twitter during the season. I delete all that mess to see all, you know, I don't try to see all that stuff. And so, yeah, you saw him stiff arm Abram, and then, you know, he tried to do something with me and, you know, I just just, just made a tackle. And so, yeah, they're going to have their stuff. They'll, their highlights hopefully should go away here soon. But, um, yeah, he, you know, just just make the tackle. And, and Abrams with that, I'm sure that, that won't happen again. All right. Great. All right. Appreciate it. All right. Pushing the ball out down the field this year. I'm sure a lot of that has to do with play calls and who's out there on the field with you, but it's also yeah. a mentality you have to have to do that. How do you approach the season just from that specific standpoint? Yeah, you know, like like always, man, I um, I just try and execute at the best possible way that I can that Coach Gruden, you know, d designs the play, you know, wants the where, the where he wants the ball to go in certain looks and all those things. And, and especially in that first Ravens games, I was taking probably one too many you know, shots instead of finding completion early on. Um, but but it, it has a lot to do with what's going on in front of you. It has a lot to do with what's what's going on outside um, and what's going on on the, on the other side of the ball, too. Um, you know, sometimes you got to chew the clock up. you got to get completions and, you know, stay on the field and things like that. Uh, but but we've been, been fortunate that our defense has been playing at such a level, man. We've been able to take some shots, take some chances, and – um, it's been nice that some of those have worked out for us. I know with an injury like you suffered on, on Sunday, um, sometimes it's not until the next morning that you figure out, okay, how bad was this really? Mm -hmm. um, a, how did it look that when you woke up Monday morning? But also, is there, is there stuff you do during the night to make sure that it's going to be in as good a possible shape? Absolutely. You know, I've learned some things um, in my time uh, playing in my eight years that I'll share with some young guy someday, you know, but not, but not yet, you know, um, you know, it's still competitive advantage. Uh, but, uh, I do, I just, there's a process of things that I go through for my body. Now, when I have an injury, there's a whole nother set of things that I do. It's kind of like a 24 hour kind of thing, you know, where it, 
it doesn't stop. You know, my day while I'm awake is super busy, whether it's an active recovery or it's something I'm pushing and something I'm going after. And then even when I'm asleep, I'm got something going on, you know, um, and usually it's hard to sleep that way, but coming from the East Coast, I was able to sleep pretty good. Uh, Talk about Kobe Bryant, the model mentality. A lot of his, that was dealing yeah. with injuries and being able to be out there and playing and, and without giving away any secrets, but is that yeah. part of, it, does it become a mentality type of thing? It, you definitely, it's definitely a mentality. Any injury that you have, the first thing your coaches ever ask, you gonna be ready on Sunday? And your first response to that is where you set your mind. You know, ah, coach, I'm going to try my best, or ah, I don't know, we'll see. Or it's, yes, I'm playing. You know, it's two different uh, ways of setting your mind to, you know, know that no matter what it is, you know, whether it's a growing, a back, uh, you know, a thumb, whatever I've had, you know, ankle, all those things, a knee, um, you know, the first response is, absolutely, I'm playing. And now every decision that I make in rehab and on the field and all that is to make sure that I'm ready to play on Sunday. Um, whereas if you're up in the air, I don't know, ah, we'll see, ah, well, you know, you've already lost the battle in your mind, you know, so anything that happens now, it's a, oh, it's a setback. Oh, no, I'm just getting it, getting it flushed out. You know, it's a different, different mindset. So absolutely. My, my whole thing, coach Gruden asked me day one, when he, the very first thing he said to me, he said, you're not allowed to get hurt. <laughs> you know, um, he said, you get hurt. I'm going back to Florida. So, uh, <laughs> I was like, well, I'll do my best. Um, so I've tried my best to always be available for our team. John uh, mentioned on Monday, Derek, about the unity of this team. And then he was I yeah. asked him about your comment after the game, looking up at all your teammates praying for you. Yep. There's a lot of guys on this team who share a commonality of faith. Can you talk yep. about that unity? It's not the only reason you guys are united, but that yeah, unity. Yeah. Please. yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, I've been on, been on a lot of teams where that is something that unites guys. Uh, we've always, um, before I even got here, there was a Bible study and things like that going on here. Um, and now we do it at my house. Carrier just, Derek Carrier just ran it uh, at my house on Monday night, you know. And we always have a group, whole group of guys that show up. And, you know, that, that, that's just, we're human beings first. You know, that, that's, that's the most important thing to, to me is my faith. You know, whether I'm playing football or, you know, at home with my wife or on the road away from my family, you know, my, the number one thing that keeps me going is that. You know, that's what I believe in. That's what, that's who I am. You know, football, this game doesn't define who I am as much as I tried to let it earlier in my life. Um, uh, and and I, there's a lot of guys on this team that share that common belief, you know. And so it's just been cool. It's not like we're throwing Bibles at people and things like that, you know, however people think, you know, they, they make stuff up all the time. But, you know, it's definitely a common common thing, um, not just on this team, but every team I've been around and other teams around the league. Um, there's a lot of things that go on. So um, it was nice to see that, but it's definitely – the brotherhood, you know, no matter what you believe, you know, we're on one team. This is a family, you know, and sometimes there's normal people in family. Sometimes they're a little bit crazier people in some families, but you're still a family. And this family that we have has just decided to stay together no matter what. And so uh, it's been nice to see so far through two games that um, that brotherhood really come come out. Um, you know, sometimes on the outside, you know, not a lot of people get to see it, but Every day we get to see it, and then when I got hurt, you really saw it. Like, oh wow, you know these these guys being there for me was what meant a lot to me. Because I'm always giving, you know. So when they were there for me, it was pretty cool. Derek, this won't be your first time going up against uh, Xavier Howard, and yes, how difficult of a task is he? And also, how comfortable and how confident are you in the progression of guys like Rugs and Edwards to really go up against a cornerback like this, you yeah. know, this Sunday compared to last year's matchup? Yeah, I think uh, you know Xavier Howard is. He, I don't think he gets enough credit. If, if I'm honest, um, in the scheme that they run, especially last year, he had 10 interceptions, and that scheme is ridiculous. Um, the, the fact that he's not at, talked as one of the very number one corners in the league up there with Jalen and Stefan and, you know, some guy, oh, yeah, he's a good player, you know, oh, yeah, he's – Especially you look at his, you know, some Madden ratings. You know, my nephews are always sending me, "Oh, this guy's Madden rating. You guys should be." But you guys, don't look at that crap. That that stuff's lying to you. Is what it's doing. <laughs> you know, uh, this guy, this guy's unbelievable. To play man-to-man -man coverage and have all these picks, to play man coverage on Stefan Diggs last week and pick a ball off, insane. The, the, the stuff that he's able to do is unbelievable, and I don't, I don't think he gets enough credit. Um, but with that said. Uh, our guys, I'm always confident in our guys. You know, I, I'm always going to give them chances, and you're not going to be stupid about it. You know, you're not just going to give a, you know, try your best not to give a free one out there. Uh, but you also are going to let your guys compete. Um, but uh, you, you try your best to go out there and you know, read the plays out how we've designed them to be read out. But 
we've always we've always taken the mindset of no matter who's out there, man, we're just going to compete and and be who we are. And uh, but with that, there's a healthy respect for um, for Xavier and uh, the kind of player he is. He he knows. I, I've told him before what kind of I think the world of him, and I think um, he's absolutely one of the very best in the league, it, it, top top tier, very top tier. Um, and uh, always excited to compete against him. Yeah, I know it's a different year, but uh, last year the Dolphins were one of the few teams that they gave you a big challenge uh, last yeah. year defensively uh, against your offense. Um, is there something that you could take from that? I know it's a different year, and what, what kind of challenges do they present? Yeah, I, I'm glad that you said that because you know, everyone's feeling good about themselves, you know, going two and zero and all that kind of stuff. Well, they don't hand any trophies out after two weeks, you know, and they don't give you any kind of anything. You know, we we have a team coming in here that you know got after us. They beat us. You know, we, we got a team coming in here that. Who cares what happened last week? As a competitor, if something happens the week before. I know for sure they're going to show up this week. You know, uh, you know, there's there's no doubt in our mind they're going to be ready to play and they're going to bring it. And and on top of that, we didn't beat them. You know, so uh, we have nothing to feel good about. You know, you know, we we can be happy about things that have happened. You're excited about the start, and that's kind of where it ends because we got a team coming in here that they they did have our number. They did beat us. And so uh, this week in practice, if we we don't have our mindset. Uh, the way that it has been in prior weeks, um, you know, then we'll fall on our face. But hopefully, and I believe, especially after these first couple of days, that everyone's mindset is ready, and we're ready for another fist fight. You know, that's what the NFL is, and you got to set your mind for that at the at the early beginning of the week because they're going to come in here ready to play. You guys haven't been able to run the ball as often as you probably would in the past because mm-hmm. of some of the injuries, I'm sure. Mm-hmm. But I've been able to kind of keep defenses honest with that quick passing game and some of those shorter passes that you have. Yeah, you know what's nice is we have so many targets. Um, obviously, Waller's going to get the majority of them. You know, he's uh, one of the best players in the NFL. He's our best player. You know, um, you know. But I thought I thought last week, the way that Pittsburgh was doing things, I think it was pretty evenly spread out. Um, and so, you know, you only have a certain amount of plays in a period. Which ones are you going to record? You know, you're going to do all the hunters. You're going to do Brian's. You're going to do Henry's. You know, Waller's obviously going to work on that. You know, you, there's a lot to work on. And with the variety of offense that we that we have. Um, you know, if if one thing maybe isn't going the way we want it to, well, well, then we go to this, or we have this, or we can tap into that. You know, and I still feel there's some things that we haven't been able to do yet that I'm excited to show. You know, and uh, uh, the first two weeks also, you have to look. They, the Ravens and the Steelers, they draft, they get free agents, they do everything, and especially in that division, to stop the run. You know, you know every decision they make, we're going to stop the run first, and. Uh, you have to take that into account too. Is it's going to be tough sledding against those guys, and you're going to do your best and all that. But you know, Hayward's a heck of a player. You know, uh, you know, Clash Campbell's a really good player. You know, you, you look at those defenses, and you look at uh, you know Wilkins on this team. He's a very, really good player. You know, um, it's going to be tough sledding, but that's the NFL. So um, hopefully, we find some looks that we like, and and it works. But at this point, I'm at the point in my career. I don't care if we run it 100 times or throw it. 70 like we just did. I just want to win these games. That's all that matters. You talked yeah. talk about Waller. Sorry, you talked about Waller and the targets uh, that he got. Um, everybody knows how, how important Foster Morrell is to this team. Didn't get you know, really targeted in the passing of the first game. You went to him in the first throw on Sunday. I mean, was that was that kind of planned? Was that in your guys' mind of like, hey, let's get him involved early? Uh, completely honest, no. You know, uh, we put people in positions that they'll be in the progression. And, you know, sir, there, there's a there's hundred times where Waller, there's been, not 100 times, but there's a lot of times where Waller's gone for 150 or 100 yards. And if you look at the second progression, that guy's wide open and he could have easily, you know, had the 100 or 150 yards. You know what I mean? And so uh, the way Coach Gruden just designs it and sets it up, um, you know, for my eyes, I'm just going to read them out true and try and be as best I can on that. Uh, but it's never like an emphasis like, oh, man, he didn't touch it. Well, we got to make sure, like, our guys are so unselfish that we don't have to think that way. It's kind of, It's really nice. It's actually a benefit that we have that we don't have to think, oh, gosh, he's going to be upset or he's, he's going to want to go somewhere else. Like, our guys are so unselfish, man, that they're good just as long as the ball's moving, you know, and we're all doing our job, seriously. Derek, with all the, uh, the injuries and the moving parts on the offensive line, how are you able to just compartmentalize and not worry about that when it's mm-hmm. happening in the middle of a game? You, you know, what? I think it's just uh, experience, you know, rep after rep. You know, you get – you get used to a guy in your face throwing a football and those kind of things. And, um, you know, you, you, honestly, I've been in the game and I'll look in the huddle finally and I'll be like, oh, wow, so and so's hurt. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, oh, you're, you know, like, you know, you're just so in the, in the mode of the blitzes, the coverages, getting the right play, all that kind of stuff. Um, you know, that, that you just, 
it's next man, it's so next man up. It's so cliche in football, but it's so true. You know, someone goes down, you have to step in and fill that role. And it's happened, you don't want it to, but it's happened here so much, you know, where I've seen so many faces in here that it's actually helped me, you know, where I still have to find a way to execute. I still have to find a way to play at a high level, regardless of what's going on. Like I told you, I don't want, I don't want or need a perfect situation, man. I just, I just want guys that love football and that'll compete with me. And uh, we, that's definitely something that we have. What does that say? I'm sorry. What does that say oh, yeah. about then the quality of the guys, the quality of the play of the guys that are coming in? Yeah, very, very high level. Um, you know, I, I think Mr. Mayock and Coach Gruden don't get enough credit um, for the guys that they've brought in. Um, obviously, everyone just goes and looks at a draft pick or looks at this or that, and those are decisions. But so are the other decisions where guys are coming in, you know, off the street to play, you know, whatever position for us and playing at a high level. You know, those are, those are. To still two decisions of football players for our team. And so um, I don't think they get enough credit. Uh, I don't think, honestly, that they care to, you know, but but just from me caring about them, I don't, I don't think they get enough credit for the kind of guys they bring in because really anywhere you look for us inside our building, like if someone goes down, well, we feel good, you know, about the next guy, like at every position, you know, quarterback, you know, running back, you look everywhere. We got guys that can play football. So it may be a different style, but, you know, we feel good about those guys. You mentioned being down the 2-0 and road before and coached it too, and you don't win a trophy, you're going to parade for that. But can you still allow yourself to be infused with confidence? Because you beat two perennial contenders, and there are 24 teams who would like to be in the position you are right now heading into week three. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we should have confidence, you know. Um, I, think, I think everyone knows, I mean, I think that we're a good football team. You know, we're definitely a good football team, but, you know, People saying you're a good football team is different than going out and executing. You know, um, I think that's the thing we're trying to hide and stay away from is really the pats on the back. You know, tell me what I did wrong. Tell me what I can do better. You know, um, and and just keep that arrow going forward instead of settling. You know, I think that's what we're trying to hide away from. There's definitely confidence that we know we're a good football team. You know, we definitely feel that way. Uh, but feeling that way and actually going out and winning football games is two different things. So. Uh, we don't want to rest in what we've done. We kind of want to look ahead and hopefully continue to be hungry. Because it, honestly, it doesn't matter how many games we win, it's still not enough. You know, and that's the mindset is uh, it's it's not enough until you're in the dance and you win the last game. It, it just won't be enough. And I think that's the culture that Coach Gruden has been trying to create here. And I think it's something that we've bought into. And hopefully we can sustain through the season. Two so more guys go Willie and then Derek. I don't know if you saw on the flight back, but the point at the end of the game, Harbaugh looks at Lamar and he says, do you want to go for it? Yeah. He says, and he just turned around. No. John's been your biggest supporter. Um, the trust between the coach and the, and the quarterback in terms of if the quarterback says, hey, let's go for it, let's do this, whatever it may be, this is somewhat yeah. transitioned in two games to be a big play offense, a lot of 20-plus yard plays. You just talk about what that means, that elevated confidence, knowing that, he just has to ask you that question, and if you tell him we're good, he's good with it. The yeah. trust between, with that you have with Gruden and this becoming that big play offense. Yeah, I think it, it's time on task. One, you know, if that's Lamar's, you know, second or third game, obviously you have confidence in him, but I don't think the coach is going to ask the quarterback. You know, same with me. My second or third game, Gruden wasn't asking me if I liked a certain play during the game. You know, he's calling the play, execute it. You know, that kind of thing. Uh, but time on task is you prove over time that um, you can execute at a high level and uh, that they can trust you in crucial situations. And uh, there's definitely this time in the game last week where Gru's like, hey, you, you like this? You want this? And I'll, I'll look at him like, yes, do it. And he, he'll call it, you know? And uh, that, I, I believe it's execution at a high level and uh, time on task, experience together. And that's two things that Coach Gruden and I have, and you saw with Coach Harbaugh and Lamar, that they obviously have, um, is time on task and a high execution rate. So uh, for us, um, you know, Coach Gruden and I, we, we think the same. We literally make the same drive to and from work. Um, you know, we're literally neighbors. You know, we, we 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 eat the same food in here. We're talking the same language all the time. Like we have that, that's been doing we're for four years. We've been doing a lot of the same things, so that when it comes to those situations, he can just look at me, and he'll just say something in the headset, and I'll look at him, and I'll be like, yes or no, you know. And uh, you know, so far it's been it's been good for us. Uh, kind of. Unrelated to football, last week, uh, your good friend Devontae Adams, he was talking to the media. He uh, said that he had a little uh, disdain for your new haircut. Yeah. You have any uh, conversations with him about that? Yeah, absolutely. And uh, he didn't know that I was growing my hair out, you know. And so 
he, he texted me back. He said, oh, okay, I didn't, he said, I knew you were, he said, I knew you were a dreadhead. So uh, that was his response back to me. So Devante, he, he was, he offered his, you know, to have a barber sent to my house because he's used to the buzz cut. Um, uh, but, but he, he held off because he didn't know that I was growing it out. So hey, I've had everyone reaching out about my hair now because they, I haven't had my hair this long since literally I was like 13 years old, you know, so everyone's like freaking out, like what's wrong, you know, uh, but nothing is wrong. Uh, I just, I just decided that I, I didn't want to cut it. Honestly, it was one day during camp. I was like, I'm too tired. I don't want to cut it. And then I was like, from now on, I was like, ah, I might as well grow it out. <laughs> <laughs> right, Good. Appreciate Thank it. You. for you obviously for uh, your performance this week just what does it feel when you when you you know, receive that kind of attention yeah i mean it's a you know obviously a team thing um you know the whole unit as a whole 14 points in the game that's that's a huge deal for that win and stuff so um you know for me every kick whether i have one kick or you know five six whatever it may be um you know everyone has the same exact value you know it's points for the team and um, you know, we're we're glad we were able to capitalize on a few opportunities uh, this past game, and you know, get an award, just kind of a cherry on top. You've had to make some pressure kicks in the first couple of weeks so far. Yeah. This year. Uh, what kind of goes through your head? How you kind of calm yourself? Um, I mean, it, the main thing is just preparation. Preparation. You know, you, you don't have to worry about, hey, this is a big moment. You know, I've been in this moment a hundred million times. It feels like now. You know, with practice kicks and game kicks and you know now I've gotten some experience where you know I'm starting to really get comfortable and whether it be you know first game of the season or the last game of the season you know all, all the kicks are trying to be um, you know the exact same basically so um, yeah big couple weeks and you know some important kicks uh, but I mean for me I treat it treat it the same and you know trying to make every single kick the same. Yeah even though you said like you kicked almost 100 the pressure kick yeah. in your career where would you rank that kick against Baltimore to tie that game? Uh, I mean, it, it was definitely a big kick. You know, we, we know what their offense could do if we, you know, um, or Baltimore, excuse me, sorry. Um, yeah, I mean, just tie up that game and stuff. But, you know, I, I had a lot of confidence that the offense would do their job to, you know, get us. And, and it kind of happened quick where, you know, we had a couple of plays and all of a sudden we're in field goal range and we decided to kick it. And um, But, I mean, that was that was an awesome opportunity where, you know, I was excited. We, we knew if we take it to overtime, I, we all felt like we had the confidence to, you know, find a way to win. And we ended up doing that. And so um, it's all about just stacking these wins now, one, one after another. In those type of situations, teams often like to call a timeout to ice yeah. the quicker, kicker, uh, so to speak. Is there a process that you guys go through or you go through in those situations? We, uh, we as specialists and stuff, we especially on Fridays, we kind of go through some situations just so, you know, whether it's we run out there and, you know, we're about to kick, fake, call a timeout, and then, you know, take 30 seconds, just hang out there. You know, just so you're comfortable in those situations, you kind of know your routine and stuff. Um, because, yeah, it is different sometimes. Um, but, you know, it's the same thing that happens after, you know, a lot of times we'll kick after a quarter ends or something. You kind of have a break. Or, um, you know, obviously Derek, when he went down uh, before that PAT, you know, it, it gives me time to, you know, hey, I've, I know what I like to do and kind of my routine um, just in preparation. Obviously, I was concerned about what, you know, Derek was doing. But at the same time, you know, that, that one point may be the difference in a game. So, you know, I have to do my job and then check on Derek later. So, glad he's doing okay. Are you the kind of guy that just don't talk to me right here and let me be? Or do you mind the interaction? And those yeah, things? I mean, there's a, there's a little of both. You know, I think there's a certain amount of, hey, you know, chat up with the guys, get those alignment, you know, give them some water and get them a breather real quick. And, um, you know, just give them a quick fist bump and stuff. But, like, after that, it's just, you know, hey, I got to refocus and get ready for this kick like I would any other kick. Fair or not, kickers have an assumed delicate psyche. How, yeah. How does adversity affect you? How do you respond? Yeah. Uh, I mean, it, it's definitely a very different position out there. You know, we're we're kind of almost like golfers out on a football field. You know, it's it's more of a mental sport for us a lot of times than it is physical. Um, and so, you know, for me, that's something where experience has definitely paid off. You know, that's why you see kickers that are a lot older in the league. So, you know, I think mentally, you know, I've, I've grown a lot over the last few years in the NFL, and um, that's definitely paid off. But, you know, just personality and, you know, just 
self-belief, all that stuff is, is huge. But I definitely think that's at least 50% of kicking and, you know, always will be. When you see a, a, a fellow kicker uh, when you're watching the game, maybe fail in a situation, a big situation, what are you, do you kind of feel for that? Knowing. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I have a hard time ever cheering against the kicker. And, you know, I, I think we kind of all get to know each other over the years. Um, you know, just exchange ideas and stuff, just like quarterbacks would around the league, stuff like that. Um, so, you know, I obviously am not wanting the other team to necessarily – necessarily succeed but uh, it's definitely hard for me to cheer against it you know you, a lot of times it's a friend it's a guy I know and um, but I would love for us to block a kick or do something like that make a good play um, you know but it, it definitely is something where yeah I've been in negatives and I've been in you know good situations too so um, you know you just have to ride the wave sometimes. Daniel you, you talk about adversity before <clears throat> you overcame adversity that at one point during training camp, that the world is overcoming at yeah. that point in time. In terms of being on the COVID list, was there a sense of relief, a sigh of relief, that maybe uh, dying down of the anxiety when you made that first kick, the first game, whatever, maybe it's stepping on the field and just th- maybe reflecting on the, the downtime that you had and yeah. how scary a time we're still living in, but you overcame that. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I think football is always a great kind of lesson for life, uh, you know, for especially for us players, you know, we, there's highs and lows and a lot of adversity sometimes, you know, I, I've been cut before, I've, you know, had tough seasons, have tough kicks before, and, you know, you, you can a lot, a lot of times you can learn a lot more from those tough times, and, you know, obviously outside of football, we've got a lot of tough things going on, COVID, all that, you know, I experienced that. So, you know, glad to, you, you appreciate when you get to come back from those moments and, you know, what you can learn from those moments and, you know, take advantage of hopefully, you know, full healthy season here and, um, you know, hopefully we keep stacking these wins. You, know, you only had one game with fans at Allegiant Stadium to, uh, to kind of get used to it, but yeah. does backdrop matter in the sense of like, you're kicking, one end you're kicking to fans, one end you're kicking to a nightclub. <laughs> yeah. Does that, does that matter? Uh, no, I, so I, I don't really notice that. I'm kind of picking out a target on the goalpost. So, you know, everything else kind of fades away and stuff. Um, it's kind of, there's that baseball movie where you get the tunnel vision and stuff. It, it's kind of like that. Um, but obviously it's an awesome, awesome atmosphere and stuff. And, you know, we're, we're very fortunate to play in an environment like that, and, you know, have that be our home, home arena. Yeah, Daniel, it's, uh, I think it's clear the mechanism from the movie. Yeah, clear, exactly. <laughs> yeah, 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 I couldn't think of it. Um, it's been two years, but how would you compare, I guess, how different is it kicking off of this new grass mm-hmm. as opposed to kicking off the infield dirt in Oakland? Yeah, it's definitely different. Um, like I said, we're, we're very fortunate. And, you know, Oakland was obviously a really cool experience to, you know, kind of close out that chapter and, you know, play on that baseball field for, you know, get to experience that. But as a kicker, and I'm sure many other positions, uh, definitely like the perfect grass that we have out in the Legion. I don't know if it changes like week to week or, you know, if you feel different at different times. Like, is there a, a, a length of field goal like you're, you'd say you're comfortable with right now at Allegiant? Like, that's – that's what I would tell coach, like, I'm good from that. Yeah, I, I think, you know, obviously weather and stuff. So if we're home away, depending where we're at. Um, and there's certain weeks where, you know, the leg's a little slower than other weeks. Um, but that's kind of, you know, we do our pregame routine and we kind of figure out. But at the end of the day, too, you know, if if I hit in pregame a 60-yard field goal, I could probably add a couple more yards with, you know, the adrenaline you get in a game. And, you know, certain situations before half, might as well swing away and stuff. So, um, you know, it, we do a good job of communicating that with coaches and stuff. And, you know, hopefully we'll get some shots at some long ones here and there. But, hey, more extra points are better too. When you kind of talk about how things are mental, how much does having guys like Trent and AJ really help you into kind of like easing your mind and yeah. taking the pressure off? I, I mean, it's huge. I, I think we're the longest tenured group together um, in the NFL right now. Um, so, you know, we're – I think we're still young guys and, you know, I, we feel like young guys, but, you know, we've been doing this together for a few years now and stuff. And I think it just get, keeps getting better and better. Um, and, you know, we just have the same coaches and same, you know, O-line, you know, protecting a lot of the times and stuff. So that, that, that helps a ton. Um, just, you know, that comfort level and, you know, be able to trust in those guys. Daniel, you talk about where you're comfortable at with adrenaline. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Have you, gone through during practice at any level or 
Um, what's the longest that you kicked maybe at a practice? Uh, you know, obviously we can look it up in a game, but yeah. what, what's the longest that you put maybe in a competition with another place kick? Yeah, I, I mean, back kind of coming out of college, I used to actually hit a lot longer and, you know, kind of mess around with it. And I, back in Colorado, you know, where I'm originally from, I used to – I hit a 75-yarder indoor uh, – at the Air Force Academy one time and you know but I, I've changed some things where realistically in a game I'm probably never going to kick a 75 yarder um, and so I'm willing to give up a few yards for a little more accuracy and that's something kind of with experience and maturity I've, I've learned hey, I'm willing to give up a few yards for that um, so you know I, I'm comfortable probably 60 and in any given day for the most part um, and then you know there may be a few yards depending on wind, how my leg feels, stuff like that. Um, you know, just different atmospheres and all that. So, um, but yeah, hopefully I, if I do get an opportunity like that, that's fun. But, you know, hopefully it's just kicks that I are makeable, a lot easier makeable kicks. A lot more extra points are always good. So um, hopefully it's just anything I can do to help the team. I'm sure it doesn't matter to you, but you're you're one of the most picked up fantasy players this week. Oh, that's um, huge! <laughs> so I, 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 it, like obviously those things don't matter, but like I'm sure like they get those kind of things like circulate, get under radar. People yeah. Them, and I, what is that like? It's just a person to be like, oh, people are focused on some number that I. Hey. Well, I will say I actually played against myself in fantasy this week in my own, like, friend group fantasy. Uh, and so that was tough because I, I took a loss. Um, and I definitely, <laughs> definitely contributed to that. But, uh, no, so it, it's fun. I think fantasy is, is great. Um, you know, it just gets people kind of more involved in specific players and, you know, in football in general. So, um, you know, I have a lot of fun with, with, it, with my college friends. And, you know, a lot, a lot of people are – messaging me and telling me, hey, you did great for me in fantasy. I was at an um, apple orchard the other day, and someone, random guy, came up to me and told me I did a great job for his fantasy team. So, yeah, I, I think people are very invested in their fantasy teams, and I think that's great. Again, you said about the 75-yarder you kicked. You know, Lane Kiffin once had Seabass attempt a 76-yarder. I, I have seen that, yes. I. <laughs> Yeah, so I, we'll see. I, like I said, I, I don't think I'll ever kick a kick that far. But, um, you know, if I ever do get sent out there, you know, that means the coaches believe I can do it. And, you know, that's that's fine. And I, I, like I said, we, we communicate. We're, we're on the same page with that. So, um, yeah, if if I get sent out for a long one, I, I'm expecting to make it. And, you know, the coaches are expecting me to make that too. So that, that's good. Okay, it's all set. Awesome. Thank you all. Thank you.